Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Super excited to show you this awesome deck that I've seen uh, flowing around. So the deck aims to try and get Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, a 15 mana, 15, 15 flyer, Annihilator 6 protection from colored spells. Um, yeah, and it aims to get it into play as soon as turn three. Uh, and then you use that with things like Omniscience and you can take extra turns uh, and the Traxxer. And you basically just win the game on turn three or you get enough of an advantage that you win the game um, as soon as turn three. So how on earth does a deck do... Uh, Emrakul, Omniscience, Atraxa, Shenanigans, all as soon as turn three. Uh, well, it's actually as soon as turn two, actually. Sorry, I apologize. We are playing Gemstone Caverns, which means you can do this on turn two. But the whole deck revolves around Glimpse uh, of Tomorrow, which is essentially, it is a Cascade card that you can uh, Cascade into. Um, and it allows you to put all of the cards in play on your side of the field into your deck you then shuffle your deck up and put that many permanents from the top into play. So turn three, you've got three lands in play. You cast Glimpse, you you shuffle your lands away, and then you just go get three random permanents. Um, or you shuffle and you put the top three cards into, your, uh, into play. Um, and the idea is that you just hope to get lucky essentially uh if you haven't if you hit emerical omniscience that kind of stuff you just put them all into play as soon as turn three or turn two um and you kind of just win the game if it works it's really really funny um and you also get to play a lot of uh, land cyclers so you get four oliphant and four generous ent so the amount of lands you have in your deck is only 18. Um, so you're very likely to just hit a bunch of big dudes and um, and just kill your opponent super, super quick. The the dream is to have like an Emrakul in hand, put an Omniscience into play from the Glimpse, and then you just hard cast the Emrakul and then you just win. Because you cast the Emrakul, you get the extra turn, and then you just swing and hit them. Um, yeah, the deck is absolute gas. Uh, I originally saw this on Young Dingo's channel, um, but I made a couple of changes. He was playing Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which I thought was really weak in this list. So I cut the Fables uh, and I added Ardent Please. And I also added the full eight land, cyc land cyclers. I think he was only playing four Generous Ent, but I think you just you should just be playing all eight at least. Um, I, th I think that, yeah, I think these are an auto include. Um, other than that, I did mix up the land base as well. He wasn't playing Gemstone Cavern. Why would you not play Gemstone Cavern? Absolute nonsense to not play this card. Um, there's a reason all the Rhino decks play it. This card is insane. So yeah, I think the Gemstone Cavern is an auto include as well. Um, and then I splashed white for Ardent Plea. You don't do anything if you don't cascade in this deck. So I think the extra couple of cascades is, is very, very powerful. Uh, moving over to the sideboard. Uh, the deck is very linear, but we do have a, a slight sideboard. Again, this is the, this is a list that I copied from Young Dingo. Um, but as you can see, the sideboard is pretty standard uh, Cascade stuff. Four Leyline of Sanctity. I actually really like the Leylines in this deck, and I think maybe we should just play Four Leyline of the Void as well. The reason I like the Leylines so much is because they come into play for free at the beginning of the game. So if you turn three cascade hit glimpse of tomorrow it's just an extra permanent which means it can then turn into an emrakul or an omniscience or something so i really like the ley line of sanctity and i think that maybe just four ley line of the void should also be in the deck because ley lines just seem to work in this deck so so well um yeah so that is the main deck and the sideboard let's leave that where it is um i don't think there's anything else really to talk about the deck is uh, very expensive in paper, but it's not too badly priced on Modo, I guess, for a modern deck. But it's really, really fun. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I think this is going to be a lot of fun putting Emrakuls into play. I mean, how can you not have fun with uh, with Emrakul and Atraxa in your deck? Uh, and Omniscience. No one plays Omniscience anymore. It used to be in like show and tell and stuff in Legacy, but I don't I don't even know if it's in that anymore. But yeah, this deck is super, super sweet. Let's get into some games because I think uh, I think we're going to have a great time. If you enjoy this content, you want to see more shenanigans in modern um, or maybe you like playing uh, zoo decks in modern. For either of those reasons, you should probably subscribe because those are the main two things that we do on this channel. Um, standards coming up so maybe i'll play some standard for you guys if that's something that interests you but i think we'll probably stick to modern um but yeah let me know if you want to see standard but uh, if you enjoy the content make sure to give us a like as well it makes a huge difference uh for a small youtuber like myself thanks for watching guys let's get into some gameplay all right let's get some emeralds into play and we're on the play which is even better 
see what we're up against. What do we got? Uh, no Cascader, so I guess we just ship it. Yeah, let's just send it back. All right, well, we've got Cascaders, we've got two lands. I think this is good enough. Put back one of the Emeracles. Obviously, we don't really need that right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and play a Misty and pass the turn. We're in no hurry to fetch Shock or anything like that. We've got nothing to do on turn two anyway. Opponent goes turn one Swamp. Thoughtseize. Well, I guess we do have to use the... Uh, the cycler right now then because i do not want them taking a land um what is the correct land to go for i guess a ste a stomping ground in this deck yeah and let's cast this and i guess it's sacred foundry then we've got white uh no we're probably gonna need blue more all right now you can have a little peek you can take one of our Cascaders, or you could be crazy and take an Emrakul, or a really, really bad enchantment. I think the jig is up. I think they know what's going on. I find it hard to imagine that uh, people don't realize when you see Cascaders, there's not many things that you can be doing when there's Cascaders in the format. You're either putting some Rhinos into play, you're casting Living Ends, you're glimpsing, uh, that's about it, really. Uh, we've drawn a another Cascader, not one that we can use, but that's fine. All we need to do is draw a land, and we've got like 19 lands in the deck. Even if we draw like an, an Oliphant, we can just do it next turn, that's fine as well. Okay, opponent plays an Inti. And we draw the Oliphant. Okay. Well, we're just going to pass. There's no reason. I guess we could do it straight away. Then we don't have to shock. So I guess we need to go for a Sacred Foundry. What does this Inti dude even do? Uh, whenever he attacks, you may discard a card. When you do, put one more counter on target attacking creature. It gains Trample. Whenever you discard one or more cards, X to the top card of your library, you may play that card until your next end step. Okay, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, let's just go ahead and cycle now. We'll get the Sacred Foundry and we will play it tapped. And now we, we have some Cascaders and we just hope that they don't have double hand disruption. I do think in a deck like this, it doesn't hurt to add Ardent Plea. Obviously, I mean, like, eight Cascaders is quite a few with four Agents and four Violent Outburst, but this deck is so heavily reliant on Cascading, I think you kind of just should be playing these as well. Opponent is doing all these cute things. And a Bowmaster, you got it. Our deck doesn't really draw cards, so we're not concerned about that. We just have to... Uh, oh, okay, we've drawn an extra land, which is actually really good, because it gives us one extra uh, creature or hit. Uh, so let's go ahead and Shardless, and we just have to hope that we're going to hit an Emrakul or something big here. Uh, so we'll cast the Glimpse. Come on. Come on, Glimpse. What do we got? Please give us... A we got Omniscience. Okay, all right, all right. We're good to go. So Shardless comes in. We now get to cast Emrakul for free. That seems pretty good. And our opponent concedes. There we go. That was a turn four Emrakul on the first game I've played with this deck. This is going to be a fun video. I can already tell this is, this is going to be a lot of fun. So moving over to the sideboard, do we really want anything? I don't think so. Our opponent's not really interacting with us. So Leyline of Sanctity can be fine. I guess it's better than Force of Negation. That seems okay. Uh, yeah, I don't really care about what they're doing. I just don't want them to interact with us. So we're just going to put in the four Ley Lines and we're going to send it. So obviously our opponent gets to go on the play this time, but that's fine. We've got two gemstone caverns in our deck. 
we're ready to turn to some emeralds if we can. Uh, well, we've got a land. Well, we've got three lands and a Cascader. I think we just keep. I think it'd be pretty greedy to mulligan this. If they thought sees us or something, that's fine. Oh, just a Ragavan. Okay. Well, fortunately, our deck really doesn't care about Ragavan. We go over the top of it so much. It's just not really a concern at all. So how can we do this and get uh, all four of our colors? Uh, steam vents. We don't run a temple garden, so this is going to have to be Hallowed Fountain or Sacred Foundry, which it can't be either. The mana base in this deck is so complicated. Just because we run so many like one offs and then there's just a bunch of like mountain cyclers. Sure. And like normally you fetch your shocks, so it's quite straightforward. Okay, let's work it out so see what we can get here. Um I just want to make it so we can get Ardent Plea in case we get thought seized. So we need to be able to get a white source, which we can. A red source we will then have. And then we can get the breeding pool. Is there a breeding pool in here? I'm pretty sure there's a breeding pool in here. There's got to be, right? Yeah, there is. Okay, sure. So we get Sacred Foundry. And then we can just go get a, uh, yeah, a breeding pool with the other one. Uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and play this tapped. And obviously we draw the ley line right on time. That's sarcastic if that wasn't clear. I wonder if this deck could work if you played it like the Ley Lines deck in Legacy. So if you haven't seen, there's a Legacy deck which plays like literally like 20 to 30 of these Ley Lines. Uh, and then there's a card that like taps for mana equal to how many enchantments you control. So you can just go like turn one, have like four or five mana, and then you turn the enchantments into dudes and kill them. But I wonder if there's a way that we can abuse these with... Uh, Glimpse. I'm not sure. Okay, so opponent is just doing Asmo food stuff. Uh, it's really just not an issue. We're still on 13. We are not concerned. All right, you can discard your dude, get all cute and get cards back. Yep, yep. Oh, you revealed another Ragavan. That is fine by me. Yeah, so we're only missing blue. Um, so we're going to get a breeding pool. Uh, it'd be nice if we could avoid shocking, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, oh, and we draw the gemstone as well. Uh, that's that's wonderful. Okay, so let's just go breeding pool, shock. And let's just go Shardless Agent. At least it's a blocker. But yeah, again, we're just praying here. Hopefully we'll hit something good. Not from the Shardless Agent. We know what we're hitting from Shardless Agent. I mean from the Glimpse. Because three hits of Glimpse isn't a lot in our deck. Uh, let's see. Come on, Glimpse. Don't do us dirty. Because we could just lose from this Glimpse. But uh, I'm sure I'm sure it won't go like that. Oh, we hit a track, sir. Okay, we can take that. And we've got a sanctity in play. That's pretty funny. Um, what are we choosing? I guess Besage is fine. Ardent plea. Uh, and I kind of just want to leave the rest in the deck. No, I don't. We can't even cast anything yet. Okay, well, we have to get something that gets lands. So an Oliphant. Uh, done. Then we get a nice little 2-2. Two -two. And we've played a land for turn. Uh, so I guess we just pass the turn with no lands in play. But we have a Traxxer. Trax is good enough, right? Oh, we need to discard some cards. Um, we don't need this. 
all this. Wait, does Gemstone tap for colorless? It does, doesn't it? Yeah, we probably should have kept that. That might have been a bit greedy. These omniscients are probably a little bit worse. Okay, opponent is still playing it out. So that to me suggests they can beat an attractor. I don't know how. Is it Asmo, Sack Four Foods, and deal a, a shit load of damage to it? Yeah, so it's Sack Two Foods, target creature deals six damage to itself. So we're gonna gain 12 life, uh, but they can kill the attractor if they get enough foods. Hopefully by the time uh, that we get back to a low life title, we will have drawn enough lands to ardently, which I shouldn't really be concerned about because we had the gemstone, but live and learn. There's bow masters not going to be, oh, now they only have to use the Asmo once. Okay. That's pretty nice. So we gained a bunch of life. Oh my God. They did it in response. For some reason they decided to respond Why did they not get the dude? Death touch. Oh, okay. Attractor actually kills itself because it has death touch. So that's why the Bowmaster trigger didn't resolve. Uh, our opponent caught that because I had no idea what just happened. And obviously because Attractor dies, there's no target for the Bowmaster to resolve. So they missed their amass one. But we're, we're back on 17 life. We have just got to accumulate some lands in play okay sacred foundry is a good draw i guess we just play that tapped and just try and buy ourselves enough time three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven they can 12. they probably can't kill us in one turn uh it depends how many food they can generate No, they can go get another cookbook. I think we're actually dead here. Well, not this turn, but I think we will be before we can get three lands in play. I think in hindsight, maybe there should just be four of the gardens in this deck. Um, just to get more dudes so that when you turn three, you have more, uh, more, more triggers. Not triggers. You have a higher permanent count. Oh, they are going deep. What on earth is this walker they've just revealed? Oh, okay, sure. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. And it's a menace, dude. Yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure they should just kill these and mow us down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we are just dead here. We can't we can't gain enough life, unfortunately. So uh, let's go to game three. Do we want to change anything? I don't think so. Now nah, let's just run it back. I think we got quite unlucky with the um with the hit because we didn't hit any lands. If we'd hit even just one land, I think we would have been all right. Uh, we definitely want to go first. But we just couldn't get the lands back and play quick enough. Uh, no red source, but we do have a Cascader. I think we can do better than that. Uh, yeah, this hand looks great. We'll go ahead and keep. And we are putting back... What are we putting back? So keep... I guess gemstone. We've got a land, second land, third land. Uh, actually, I guess it's better to keep the, I think it's actually better to keep the Ents in our, in our deck. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just play a land and pass the turn. Yeah, I think if you, basically, if you just shuffle these back into your deck, instead of shoveling this back into your deck, this is a better hit off Glimpse, right? So I guess we want more of these in our deck if we're going to use them for the same thing, which is just to make a mana for now.
The sanctity means that we don't have to worry too much about things like Thoughtseize, um, but obviously we will then lose it straight away when we glimpse. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Opponent Fetch Shocks, what are they up to? Ragavan, you got it. God, Ragavan just does not look very scary um, when we're doing what our deck is doing. And a Shadow Spit. Absolutely love the Mox Amber. Oh, this is such a sweet card. It makes me want to play Ragavan and Isamaru. Uh, yeah, just such a sweet card. Oh, spoiled for choice with lands. Let's just play a Misty Rainforest and we'll pass the turn. The question is, if we're not under pressure, are we supposed to just wait with this Arden Plea and get more permanents in play? I don't know how much time you're supposed to give the opponent, but obviously one extra land makes a huge difference. <laughs> opponent hits a Traxxer from Ragavan. Probably won't be casting that anytime soon. They thought sees themselves to get an Asmo into play. Very fancy. So in hand, they now have uh, Asmo's gone, Maya's gone, they're going to the cookbook and a Ragavan. Okay. Yeah, we actually have quite a lot of time. I'm very tempted to just not do anything this turn. Uh, breeding pool, I guess. No, no, no. Sacred Foundry. No, Stomping Ground. Stomping Ground. And then we'll get Breeding Pool. Yeah. Okay, Childless Agent is pretty sweet. Let's just go ahead and do it. We didn't come here not to cast Childless Agents. All right, deck. What do we got for us this time? Hopefully some Emrakuls or maybe an Omniscience. That'd be pretty sweet. I guess not with this hand. <laughs> All right, well, that's not bad. We have an Emrakul in play, an Oliphant, and a Pseudo Omniscience. Our opponent makes a food, which is kind of cute. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or from the top of your library without paying its mana cost. I'm so greedy, I just want to ardently for free. But no, let's just go ahead and play this and now we can't do anything for free so i guess we just pass the turn with our emrakul in play and the opponent scoops uh our opponent has just put in the chat good luck my deck is weak and we've won the die have we won the dice roll every single game you youtuber luck is so unfair uh yeah we'll keep this uh what are we leading off with uh, I guess Sacred Foundry is fine. Pass on to our opponent. Our opponent's called Middle Age, Middle Mage. I thought I said Middle Ages in like Lord of the Rings, Battle for Middle Ages. Pretty sure that's what it is. Oh, we're against Tron. Why has they said our, their deck is weak? They're playing Tron. What are they talking about? Um, well, we don't have a green source for our Besaidu. Uh, I guess we could go fine. We could have just shocked and got, and got a green source. I don't think it matters too much. Let's just play a Hallowed Fountain tapped. And we'll pass the turn. In fact, if we're against a Tron deck, I think we're actually going to buy ourselves a turn. Just besage you their land. And then we can play... Uh, this on turn four instead, and then we've got an extra permanent in play. Sylvan Scrying is fine. They've also played a forest. Why have they said their deck is weak? What are they doing that's so weird? Because Tron's pretty good. So we need to go get a green source here. So we get a Stomping Ground. And untap. So do we ardent plea or ah? Uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's just let's just cast a cascader. Um, I 
Let's do Ardent Plea and then we've got another permanent in play. They're tapped out so they can't cast whatever the Tron card is that says um, counter target sorcery spell. I know some people play it. It's make a 1-1, one, one, no, make a 0-1 a Scion token, uh, counter target sorcery, or there's another mode on it, like target creature gets minus 2 or minus 2 or something. But some Tron decks play it. So we cast Glimpse. I assume this is going to resolve. It does. And we have an Omniscience. So all of these come into play. Oh, we can just cast this. Yeah, let's do that. And we hit a Traxa and a Garden. Okay. So we get a zero one, one and a Traxa trigger resolves. We've got a green source for Besaidu. What do we want? One, two, uh, three. Yeah, that'll do. Maybe we want to, oh no, we should have taken the force actually. Hopefully we won't get to that point. Uh, we've played a land, so we'll just pass the turn back. We're just gonna. I think we're just gonna violent outburst again. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven permanents in play next turn. Hopefully, seven permanents is enough to get the job done. Opponent play. Okay, maybe our opponent is on something very different. I have never seen a dryad in Tron. What on earth are they doing? Hmm. Well, this should be interesting because I, I don't know what's going on, but it looks sweet. <laughs> Lay of the land. Uh, for a green, you can search a library for a basic land, reveal it and put it into your hand. You got it. And I think it's worth just keep cycling all of these, get some more lands. The less lands in, sorry, yeah, the less lands in our deck means our Cascaders should be better. Uh, let's go ahead and bonk our opponent for a little bit of damage here. Our opponent is no way near Tron. Um, <laughs> we've got the double exalted attractor, which I didn't even realize. So hit our opponent for nine, we gain nine. And uh, let's just go ahead and do it now, I think. Red, anything, blue. No, red, green, blue. Uh, let's just outburst. Probably should have Shard uh, Shardless Agented. It doesn't really make too much of a difference, I don't think. Especially with this many permanents, we should be fine. That would have been lethal in two turns if we had done it this way and just cast a Violent Outburst as an Anthem, hit them for 10. Our opponent just put GG, you got me. We haven't hit anything yet. We could just hit lands, dude. All right, on the play. Got that YouTuber luck. Let's go. Um, a singular Cascader and lands, essentially. Yeah, seems pretty good. We've got the turn one gardens and then we can hit... Uh, all our colors very easily. Um, I guess we just go Wooded Foothills and pass the turn. Opponent goes Street Wraith, so it looks like we're against Living End. Presumably. There is a Death Shadow that plays Street Wraith, but generally this is going to be... Uh, living end if that is the case oh no oh no it's all gone downhill well you can have our ardent plea or you can take our mystery one with the multiverse why are we playing it who knows yeah no surprise there Let's go ahead and get a white source at the end of turn, which will be Sacred Foundry. 
and untap, we draw a generous N, which is ironically pretty good in this matchup. Uh, let's go ahead and play the gardens. I guess we could slow roll it if we wanted to. Wait, our opponent doesn't have a land. So they kept a no, no land double street wraith and they've drawn a third one and they haven't drawn a land. They must have had a very good hand to justify keeping that. That or they misclicked. I have a feeling they misclicked. Um, does it matter? I guess we play Breeding Pool. We'll, we'll send the message. We'll get in with that plant token. And we now actually have Force of Negation in case our opponent eventually gets to be able to do anything. But I think... Assuming we hit a Cascader, eventually we should be able to lock this up. They're griefing us again. Have at it. We haven't got anything. You're fine. They've got to take the force, right? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, what have they pitched? A Living End and an Architects of Well. Sure. And I guess we just start playing more tapped lands and passing the turn back. What an action-packed game. Our opponent has cast two spells, drawn three cards, and not drawn a land. Wait, are we going to hard cast an Atraxa? Wait, I don't think we can. No, we don't have a black source. Is that an oversight? I hate to think so. Insane, by the way. <laughs> Our opponent's just not drawing lands. Um, yeah, what a nightmare. What is Our opponent just put insane, by the way. What is this? Uh, let's just go ahead and play a gemstone. Uh, no, we're actually going to have to do it during their turn, just in case they have a force of negation. Like, there's no reason to get blown out by our opponent having something yet. So we do this at their end step, and then that way they can't force of negation. Whereas if they had, if I had done it during my main phase, they probably have a force of negation. Like, what else could they possibly have, right? All right, what do we got, deck? That's a lot of permanents. Oh, choose a besage you to keep. I guess this one. And then all our dudes get bigger. And our opponent just concedes. All right. <laughs> opponent just put, what is this? And then lol in capitals. So they now know what we're on. I I don't know if they actually never drew a land or they just gave up. Who knows? Uh, do we change anything? I guess Mystical Dispute is good for backup. Leyland of Sanctity is fine. I don't really think we care too much about it. All it is is four griefs, right? Do I really want to draw a bad card just for in case they have a grief? Not really. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess we could bring in Mystical Dispute and just hard cast it. Uh, yeah, we probably should be doing that. And what do we trim on? I guess we don't need that many glimpses. And one top end. Mm, yeah, let's give that a go. Shame we don't have Ley Line of the Void. The Ley Lines are really good in this deck, actually. Maybe it's just worth playing more Ley Lines in the sideboard. Any Ley Line that's worth it, right? Yeah, this hand looks great. We'll go ahead and keep. Opponent leads off with the Street Wraith. Come on. Have you got your land, opponent? You do have a land. Okay. Good stuff. And they're shocking. And they're just going to cycle. You got it. Ooh, the counter magic. God, I, I hate it uh, when I play like 
actual good cards like force of negation i feel like i feel like it's uh it's cheesy to play good cards i don't know why i just i just want to play my territorial carvies and my cyanodracos or put emeralds into play playing like good cards like force of negation and stuff it just feels like cheating I would probably have a lot more success if I played with the good cards, like if I just played Rhinos or whatever, but I'd rather play Timeless Amulet or Zoo or something. Okay, opponent gets the stomping ground and they cycle some more cards. Action packed game so far. Uh, let's just go end of turn fetch. I guess Hallowed Fountain, and then we can go get a Steam Vents, yeah. Drawing an Emrakul that hopefully we will not, uh, not need to cast. I guess if we cascade into Omniscience, we could just cast it from hand. That would be pretty sweet. And these were the actual Emrakuls that I used to own when I first got back into Magic. Really like that card. Opponent hits Living End. How many cards have they got in the bin? Not a lot. Um, yeah, we'll just ditch the Mystical Dispute here. And then we can ditch the Attractor with the next. Oh, we should have done that the other way around. That is my bad. Because then we could have kept up mystical dispute plus force of negation. Yeah, that was a, that was an error on me. Uh, what are we going to get here? We want red, and that's about all that matters. I guess we want red blue for force. Yeah, let's go for that. Modern mana bases are so so good. How is it that we have like we can just play anything we've wanted pretty much? With two fetches and a Beseju, we have got all of our colors. We've got double blue for Force of Negation. Mana is just too good in modern right now. Is that controversial? I don't know, but it feels like it. So now we get to go at the end of their turn, Violent Outburst with Force of Negation back up. This should be, I think this should be enough to end it, but it, it all depends on what we hit with the Outburst, really. Uh, sorry, not the Outburst, the Glimpse. Oh, okay. They've actually sideboarded into Rhinos. So they expect people to bring in all their graveyard hate. So then they just turn into a non-graveyard deck. That's an interesting idea. I like that. That's cool. So they can't have um, Mystical Disputes up here because they've tapped their forest. So let's just go for it. We've got Force of Negation back up anyway, if they do have something. But I doubt it. Uh, we just have to hope that we don't whiff on this. If we whiff, then obviously we are just screwed here. Yikes. That was not good. Uh, yeah, that's not ideal, but we've got an end. We'll take that, I guess. We don't really have any choice. They're only at 11. They cycled and, and yeah, they've cycled two street races. They've shocked. They've de dealt themselves so much damage that we can kill them relatively quickly here. They got fire and ice here. No, <laughs> waker of the waves, sure. Look at the top two cards, put one into your hand, put the other into your graveyard. So we get to whack our opponent here for five. I do get punished here for not uh, doing this instant speed and blocking because now they have an extra blocker, but uh, hopefully that won't matter too much. Also getting very punished for using the um, mystical dispute there. Uh, to pitch to the Force of Negation, when that was obviously a very, very big error. I should have pitched the Atraxa, um, because now 
it would have been fine to have a mystical dispute in hand. Whereas we don't really care for an Atraxa. And of course we keep drawing these one with the universe. It's only fair. Oh, they have the living end. Um, yeah, well, we can't do anything about it. We haven't drawn another land. Uh, we couldn't have even mystical disputed this, to be fair. Hopefully they hit rhinos. That would be much, much better for us. How many rhinos have they brought in, though, right? Oh, it is a rhinos. Okay, that's fine. I say fine. It's not good, but they lose one of their rhinos, which is good for us, obviously. Yep, yep, yep. So we trade with a rhino and we just need to somehow draw a land and draw a cascader very, very quickly. Uh, yeah, this is going to be rough. This is going to be very rough. And this was during our turn, which is why I didn't force for obvious reasons. You can only force for free in your opponent's turn. I feel like there's a lot of people that just be like typical like Twitch chat is why didn't you do this when it's an illegal play? And I like uh, Andre Mangucci's response, which is that is a good play in paper, but not on arena. That's what he normally says, because in paper you can accidentally misplay and do things like that. Not on purpose, though. No scum plays. But uh, yeah, in person, that kind of stuff does happen. And then your opponent's like, you can't force during your own turn. And then they now know you have a force. All right, so we take a big load of damage here. We're going to have to basically draw a land in the next turn or so. Uh, we can crack a food token to buy us a little bit more time. Okay. That's a good start. And now we just have to somehow draw exactly a Cascader. I don't think there's anything else that is going to get us out of this. So you hit us for six, we go down to five. Um, yeah, very intrigued by the Rhino switch up. I've seen it before, um, but it doesn't beat the Chalice hate, which I thought was kind of the whole, the, the main problem, not engineered explosives. Well, that's not a Cascader. On to game three. Do we want to change anything? So we know they've got Rhinos instead now. I don't think that changes anything. Um... Let's stick these back in. I, I don't know if... I assume we didn't get punished for having those, but... Uh, yeah, I don't I don't want those anymore. I just want to hit my Atraxas and have a good time. And those don't let us do that. Well, that's an easy mulligan. Oh, no. The double Otawara hand with all the Cascaders. We're down to five. Five is still winnable. Not with this hand, though. Uh, is it... So we got turn one, gemstone. Cycle the Oliphant. Yeah, sure. Really not ideal. Uh... We'll put those two back. Atrax is good to have in hand in case you draw Omniscience, whereas the enchantment you don't want to draw at all. So yeah, we've got the Oliphant. So we've got two lands. The problem is, what land do we get? So what we're going to actually have to do is just not use the mana this turn. Because I don't want to use this, go get a Breeding Pool. Oh, okay, we're going to have to. Oh no, they're going to take our Cascader. We are shit out of luck this game. Um, yeah, we're going to have to, we're going to have to take uh, a chance. Um, well, if they take this, 
technically we have more red green or red yeah stomping ground it is not like this i don't want to lose like this So they just take the Shardless Agent, I assume. We can't actually cast it yet, so maybe they want to be greedy and take the Force, but I don't know. We'll see what they want to do. I think it's actually reasonable to take the Force if you've got, like, the turn three. Okay. That is what they're choosing to do. And they play the botani Botanical Sanctum, and they pass the turn. All right. We draw on a... I mean, we have signed up to draw Atraxas in our deck. When you play four Atraxas, four Emrakul, four Omniscience, you're going to draw them. So uh, definitely can't be mad that we've drawn these. That is very fair. But uh, yeah, all we need to do is untap, draw a Brooding Pool, slam Shardless Agent and win the game, right? Ooh, that's all we need to do. They play a tapped land, sure. Easy breeding pool off the top. That's not a breeding pool. All right, pass it back to our opponent. Fortunately for us, their living end isn't even that good. All it does is put a grief into play and an Oliphant, which then trades without Oliphant. Um, and then they get to take one of our Shardless Agents, but we still have a Cascader. It's just the land we're missing. Okay, so they're casting their own Shardless Agent. What are they going to hit? Who knows? It could be Living End. It's a Living End. Okay. You get one of our Shardless Agents, which is fine. And we're still live to draw a land here. And they've actually just made it better if we draw a land, because then we have more permanents. Oh, that's that's a bit of a tease, isn't it? Uh, is there any reason to do this now, or is it better to wait? I can't think of any reason why, I guess, Tidebinder? Would they play Tristani's Tidebinder in Living End? I can't imagine they would. Uh, I really don't want to lose this Oliphant. Because I kind of want it for the Shardless Agent. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think I'd rather keep it around if possible. I guess if we cycled straight away, we could have got a uh, Breeding Pool and played it tapped. Whereas I'm going to have to shock it in now. I don't know if that really matters. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It doesn't matter. We're, we're dead next next swing anyway. So the other option is we can keep the Oliphant or we can uh, trade it for their Oliphant, take seven, and then we're not dead, but we then have one less permanent in play. Uh, I don't know what to do. I guess we do the correct thing, which is not die to the following turn if they have a counter spell. Yeah, it buys us a little bit more time. All right, generous end. Let's go get a breeding pool. Wait for, it doesn't matter. We, <laughs> we draw another gemstone. Okay, opponent, do you have the counter spell? I'm going to assume they do, but we will make them have it. Oh my god, they don't? Okay. We could just win here. Oh, <laughs> we hit three lands. Oh no. Maybe if we kept the Oliphant, we would have been better off. Um, I think that's a pretty risky play though. Alright, well. We pass the turn back. And I guess we just hope we draw another one. Oh, this is painful. Uh, 
Uh, end of turn, we can't really fetch because we need a red source and a white. So we obviously want Sacred Foundry, then we've got all of our colors, but Misty Rainforest can't get red white. So we block here, take three. So we can afford to fetch Shock next turn anyway. Okay, and maybe draw another Cascader. We draw <laughs> Omniscience. We were one card off hitting Omniscience, which then we could have played Atraxa and probably just won the game. So that Olifant, in theory, yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, we're playing the Gemstone. We'll pass the turn and we have one more draw step. And that's assuming our opponent doesn't draw a counter spell in, in the last like couple of turns that we've had. Oh, uh, what a what a shame. I thought we were gonna have a really, really sweet win there where we uh struggled to hit our land drops and our opponent takes our hand apart. But we whiff and hit three lands. Not even not even like good fixing lands, but that's okay. We still have another draw. We'll just find a Cascade. Uh, yeah, we're gonna find a Cascade, but the problem is we can't shock. So we're gonna have to choose red and hope we don't draw white. Um, wow, that would make me sad if we draw an Ardent Plea here. But statistically we have four Outbursts, three Ardent Pleas. So Stomping Ground is actually the correct pick. Come on, deck. What do we got? Yeah, that's not going to do it. What a way to go. Should have kept the Olifant. I know that's results-based thinking, but I don't care. I think we should have kept the Olifant. Um, but that was a lot of fun. So well played to our opponent. Um, game one was very strange. But uh, yeah, our opponent got there in the end.